Oh, Facebook Live from my computer. Would it be my first one? Technically, it would only be like my second one. Actually, no. Whatever. Anyways, put this shit up. So, what's up, people? Burke, Hugh, and Becca. Bianca, 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 Bianca. Let's get right into it. So, Al Anon, and what is it all about? Because I'm going to make this uh, post on my YouTube channel, which has been getting a lot of views, a new one about people with parent, parent issues. So, bro, how you guys doing? So, yes, I went to an Al Anon meeting. No, it is not Alcoholics Anonymous, okay? Um, where should I start with this? Just so everyone understands here, like, what's going on with my life on a personal level, um, and everything else. So, I'll start here. Alcohol, Alcoholics Anonymous is for, is for those people who have issues with alcohol, okay? Al Anon is for people who are dealing with someone who has issues with, al with alcohol, and I guess people who have, who have problem, problems with alcohol are in, are in it too. And, it was recommended to me more than once, thank you universe, by my own father to go to an Alon meeting. And it's like, I, at first I was like, why would I go? Because no one in my family, my immediate family at least, has issues with drinking. Um, what's up, Juan? The problem is this. Here's the thing. My dad told me this. I learned about my mom um, within the last six months or so. My dad has told me that my mother um, is the adult stepchild, or you could say adult child, of an alcoholic, okay? When she was younger, my grandmother, her mom, was with a guy who was who was an alcoholic. And unfortunately, her mom didn't defend her. And that had a huge negative impact on my mother that's still affecting her to this day. Now, what my mom will do is this. She will talk about that and talk about how he was, you know, abusive and just down nasty. But she won't admit that she has issues from this to this day, and my dad told me this, that she went to counseling for it, and um, stopped because she thought that things were great, that she was over it, which is not true, because it's it's been driving myself and my sister and us nuts since we were teenagers. Actually, no, before we were teenagers, right around the preteen age, my sister had issues where, um, I'm not sure I too much detail, but CPS was called. Um, obviously, you know, obviously, you all know about my mom's issues, all that stuff. And my dad was like, "You need to go out and I'm like, "Why?" I was like, "What does it do, with my mother?" Like, none of us have issues with alcohol. It's the fact that it with my mother and 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 with the problems with alcohol, it's interchangeable because one of the things about Alan, one of the first steps they talk about is like, you know, is addressing that you are powerless over what alcohol has done to you. Okay, you can't change it. You need help. And for me, the biggest thing that I've had to deal with since I was like 17, 15 is my mother and knowing how and just dealing with who she is and accepting the fact that, two things, accepting the fact that one, I cannot change her and two, accepting for who she is. And it's like, you know, I progress a lot with her, um, letting a lot of issues and stuff like that. And y'all want to comment on this, go ahead, let me know. But, um... It was interesting, like going there, and it, it finally clicked why I should go because my dad told me this. We we're talking about this the other day because my mom decided to not tell me that I had a cousin who was in town, and I found it from my sister and my cousin. I'm like, wait, how come no one's gonna tell me this shit? Like, why, 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 why would my own mother tell me, hey, your cousin's in town for Memorial Weekend, who you haven't seen since you're like, I haven't seen my cousins on my mom's side since I was like, shit, 12 or something. It's been a long time. I'm 31. You would think she'd tell me. No. In fact, she didn't mention anything up until about Tuesday, after my cousin had left. So, my dad was like, you gotta understand, like, the patterns of dealing with someone who suffers from alcoholism or is an alcoholic, the same thing you're doing with your mom. You default to a certain emotion and a certain pattern that, can, that, that, can, that continues over and over and over and over. And I'm like, what pattern am I in with her? And then he, he he helped me out. The default motion I go to with her all the time, which I need to work on, thanks to Rebecca, uh, is anger. Because I would default to anger, which then would turn to hurt, frustration, uh, back to anger, and then just play so over again. And he said, you know, I mentioned this, and it's true, I've read some pamphlets, which... 
like half, one of them. He talks about um, it, it's basically you're engaged in a pattern with this person, and it drives you insane. But the thing is, it 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 becomes unconscious. You don't you don't become aware of it until you sit there and go, "What the fuck is a pattern?" And I'll get to that in a second. So I went to my first meeting on Tuesday. Um, I was kind of like weirded out by it, you know. I was kind of like, "Why am I there?" Like, like wondering like is wondering if this is going to be helpful for me. And <laughs> when you first get there. They're like, which name? You know, everyone goes by first name, so everyone can remain anonymous, which is good. And I am sitting there like this, kind of like listening, and, and someone leads, and the rule is, whoever's talking, you can't interrupt them until they're done, and someone else share something else. And they're also working on like the 12 steps, the 12 steps, and they're on step five, so I'm like way behind, whatever it is, right? So, I... I'm sitting there and listening to everyone else, and some some goes, "Hi, I'm Cheryl," and everyone's like, "Hi, Cheryl," and she shares, and they're all like, "Oh, thanks for sharing." And I'm, I was kind of like, "It's weird." The funny thing is, if you hear something enough, like if if a group repeats shit enough out loud, eventually you will unconsciously repeat it too. I started saying stuff, and I was like, "Wait, why am I saying that?" Just involuntarily, it was weird, but that's human nature. So, anyways, um, and then you know, I had to raise my hand like I'm the new guy, whatever, and I wasn't gonna share anything toward till 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 the end when the I guess some much older lady, some president was like, Would the new person like to share? And I went, shit. And it was interesting to hear other people um talk about things that where they were where they were except one, which is admitting you have no power of this over this thing, alcohol, whomever it is. Um and then step five is like admitting all the wrong things you've done to that person and other people in your life, you know. And a lot of people are afraid about being judged and admitting what they've done. And I'm like, I'm sort of like, yo, like, I'm admitting shit for what I've, what I've, I've been admitting things I've done to people, all the wrong things for years. So to me, it's not, a, it's not, it's not sort of a challenge, you know, thanks to personal development. But, and I'm glad I went because the funny thing is, and I'll say this too, I'm not, I don't mean to digress. I've been taking Ormus for a while, for like over two months now, and I'm starting to like sense different energies and sense different things, and I shit you not, I kid you not, as I'm sitting there in the room, I feel this release of energy, like this release, like I'm letting go of my mom, whatever it is I'm still, that I'm still holding on to consciously, and I sh kid you not, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I feel someone next to me, I felt someone next to me, and I was like, who, and then, who is this, and then instantly got the, the got the picture of my grandmother, my mom's mom, like, having her hand on me smiling saying good for you you needed to do this it was weird but i believe i i sense grammy trisha my grandmother who's been dead for years she died of like lung cancer um some type of cancer like lung. she sued she was a smoker but i swear and i was like okay and um, i'm glad i went because i shared the pattern that i got into my mother and my sister is in the same pattern the difference between my sister and i is this my sister has decided to stay in this pattern of doing with my mom, of being in this insane pattern of trying to keep my mom in this false sense of reality of that I'm still going to be this obedient child to you, and um, and uh, you know just do whatever, and and it, it, it's worth it's worth doing that than versus telling you how I really feel, and the truth of the matter is. For me, what I've noticed with my mother is that I've always had a hard time since I've been since since I'm a teenager of like me trying to, um, of wanting to love her and still respect her, but she wants me to do this. She wants me to be to be this obedient child, even when thirty one, in a way that works for her, where she feels like she's where she feels like she's in control and she's and she's respected. And I've always felt like this shit is not been right for me, it hasn't been, for years, I've, I've always had this feeling like, I shouldn't do this, like, here's a pattern, here's what happens to my mother, and it works both ways with my sister and I, my mom plays each other, plays plays one of us, she'll get in a fight with one child, talk to the other one, not say shit to the other one, until, until you come out and say you're sorry, and, and, and you're the one who's wrong, and then you're, then you're on the road to redemption, so right now my mother is somewhat cool with me, but talks to my sister a lot, they text each other every day, but then my mom will ask her, or if, or, if she, or, or, or if she's cool with me, to continually come over and help. Help me help me with this. Help me with that. Help me with this. Help me with that. And I'm just like, after a while, it's like, do you want to see me? To see me? Or do you always, do you always need me for yourself? Like, she asked, she asked us to, like, take out, the take out the recycling 
flip her mattress, clean the stove, like, shit that she can do that's not, like, that's not hard. She's not disabled. She's in her 60s, but she's very capable of working out, going dancing, like, it's not like she's disabled. No, she's disabled, and if she, or my mom was asking herself, like, once in a while, great, but, like, it's a constant thing all the time, and I'm just sick of it. I'm just like, why do I have to go out and help you with shit? Like, if that's the way you're seeing me, tell me you want to see me, because, again, my father doesn't do it. My dad's like, well, he needs help. He'll ask. If you want to see me, my, my, my dad would be like, hey, Matt, do you want to see this movie? Do you want to see this movie? I'm like, sure, let's do it. My mom doesn't do that. She has to, like, get you to come back and, and just do stuff all the time, and it's annoying. I'm sick of it. So anyways, that's one thing she does. So this pattern with my mother and I, and my sister the same way, is this. Everything's good. It's walking an eggshell, which is, which is what it's like to deal with someone who has, who's not college. You walk in eggshells, we have to, like, not fight with them, always say yes, and just make them, you, you, I've been an enabler. I guess you could say, and I'll learn that, I guess, of, of enabling her behavior and her status way where she, where she refuses to change. It's going to be a long face with lie, by the way. She said in the beginning. So, what happens is, everything's kind of good, but it always feels awkward with my mother, like, talking on the phone, hey, how you doing, I missed you, blah, 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 all that fun stuff, right? And then a fight happens where I get upset, and I'll lash out. I may cuss out or say something. Then I will apologize. My mom is my mom has only acknowledged a couple of my apologies in in my life. It's only been a couple. What the pattern that we've had is we get in a fight, I apologize, and it's never talked about. No, nothing's ever said like ever, and it's like awkward because it's like I've apologized, moved on, but you're still holding on to shit from two months ago, a year, all these things, and it's like, what are you doing? But that's who she is, you know. So what happens is we get in a fight. I feel bad, I apologize, I forgive, and I move on. She doesn't. What she does is decides to not talk to me, makes me be the one, and everyone else in her life have to reach out constantly, always being the first, always taking the high road, always making you feel like you're crazy, where you're working your shit, but she can stay here, but you have to be the bigger person and apologize to her. And since I'm her child, her son, it has to be the way of, you're my son, I'm your mother, how dare you do this to me, I'm infallible, I'm like God. And it's like, that's not who you are, but that's what you So I had to be on this road to redemption where I had to constantly reach out and show her that I care and show her that I'm respectful in a way that she feels in her mind, oh, now you're respectful because this, is, because, because, this, because this is what I want from you. So what happens along the way is I get frustrated, I feel hurt, sad, rejected, and I'm like, am I really that bad of a son? And I think to myself, am I that terrible? Because then everyone else, all these other moms, people think, wow, you're a really good like child and son. Your parents raised you, did a good job. And I think to myself, like, why does my mom not see this? So this, this whole pattern continues, and it's like I'm just fucking myself over. Then I'm there, then I'm talking to her. Um, be the boss, thanks. <laughs> she took out the hands on its own. <laughs> That's funny. So anyways, so then we do this shit, do this stupid ass dance, and I'm like, why am I trying so hard? And then, and then, and then I, then from feeling hurt and you're sorry, I, I then think, oh my god, I have more shit to work on. I'm still, I'm still jacked up inside. Then doing also the work to have that relationship with someone who's not doing jack shit, who doesn't want to do anything else, who doesn't want to improve, but expects me to come to her in her way that works for her. And I'm sitting on, and then by doing this, the, by doing this still thing, this this is where the, the the insanity comes through. I'm doing this, and all it's causing me is hurt, anger, frustration, and bullshit. Wow, for her, it makes her feel like, oh, I'm the mom. Now you respect me. I and mean, nobody wins. And then what? Happens, then then what I do is, I end up having resentment. I end up not want to talk to her, not want to say shit to her, and I disappear. And I'm like, fuck this. So, and I, then then I feel like, why do I always have to be this person thing that's not who I am? So I realized this pattern, and it just continues over and over and over, and I was, I was like, oh shit. And I was like, one, I'm going to Al Anon, because I need to know more about how my mom is, like, of having been raised by the adult child of an alcoholic, how it's fucked up my sister and I emotionally for years, not realizing it, right? And I'm like, what the hell? Like, what's going on? I realized this pattern, I was like, oh shit. And then when I realized the pattern, I was like, now I can finally take now I can finally change things and take back my power. Because here's what I realized from this. 
I can finally learn to love my mom, which I've been, which is why I've had a hard time like fighting her. It's like I can finally learn to love my mom and still respect her and honor her as a mother, honor my mother in a way that works for me. That works for me. And I was like, oh shit, because the problem is I would get mad at her getting upset at me and be like, that's not fair, it's fucked up, and take and take responsibility for that. And it's like at this point it's like it doesn't matter anymore. I'm not a fucked up son. I'm not disrespectful. I'm not unreliable, which tells me all this shit. I'm not. It's not who I am. That's what she thinks because I'm not doing what she wants me to do in, in, in ways. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense anymore. Like, this is stupid. Like, why can't we just be adults and just be happier? I don't do that anymore. And it's still a process. This, this, isn't, this is not the end of be all, you know. I've only been on a meeting. But I share this with the group. And... And I feel better. I feel happier. And it, and it became okay with who she is. I really felt like, oh God, like I'm okay with this. Like I'm okay with her being angry at me now because at this point I feel like, you know, I'm going to do me. I'm going to do this because in a way that makes me feel happy, where I feel good, where I want it. Because now I actually want to talk to her. I actually do want to reach out to her because I'm doing, I'm doing the way that works for me. Now I was selfish just because, because before, it, before it, was, it was just hurting me. Now I'm like, oh, this is helping me. And... And if that makes me look, and if, and, if, and if doing this my way that makes me work for me where I feel better, makes me look like some disrespectful son, then so be it. I'm okay with that because that is her reaction. That's what she wants to take it. That is not my fault. That's not my responsibility. That is hers. And that's her issue. If she chooses to decide, again, unconsciously or consciously, to be hurtful, be mad, and be resentful towards me, that is okay. That's who she is. Because no matter what I do or say, I cannot control my mother. I can't do a goddamn thing. I can't do shit. That's who she is. I still love her. She's still my mom. Love her distance. I still admire her for all the good times we've had. But I can't change her. And that's cool. And now that I can say that, I feel better. I'm happier. And there's freedom in that. It's like, I can't change you. Sweet. I'm done. I can let you the fuck go and do me and be happy and just have fun in life. I don't know what the fuck that's all about. Whatever. And there's freedom in that. But before, I was trying to like do all this shit to cause a change. Now I'm like, no, nah, I'm not doing this pattern anymore. I'm going to do me. I'm going to do the pattern that works for me. And after I shared this, the entire group, all of them were like, keep coming back. Keep coming back. Keep coming back. And I went, okay, that's the sign I'm coming back. I was like, oh shit, it's funny. It's true. I'm coming back. Um, but yeah, I need to go. I need to go to this thing badly. I resisted it. I'm going back again next Tuesday. My mother has been a huge force impact in my life, for better or for worse. That's what I to learn from, so that when I do have my own children, I won't be like her. I'll be more loving, compassionate, and forgiving, and move on like my father has, and learn from her and stuff, you know? But... That's been my experience. Whoever you are watching this, you be on Facebook or when I do up upload this to YouTube, you're not alone. You know, it's like, I hope it helps somebody out there. If you've had a parent or, or maybe it's a brother or sibling that's got someone who's got issues with alcohol, it will drive you nuts because you enable them, you're in a pattern that doesn't benefit you or them. It's like, I thought my mom hit rock bottom at this point. So love her, still be there for her. Now I want to text her more and say hi and love her and just do whatever because I don't have to be in this pattern where she gets mad. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I forgive her, love you, and that's your problem. Will I still, I still be frustrated with her and stuff? Yeah, we're human. Shit happens. But I don't have to be in this stupid pattern where, it's in, where I'm driving myself insane trying to be something that doesn't, that doesn't work for me. You know? But... Thank you for sharing. I'm um, thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs> Appreciate you all. I'm done. I'm gonna let this be. And uh show you more why I learn about this stuff. Cause I'm telling you right now, for those of you with parent issues, it's from a YouTube channel in here. Um I've got a lot of hits and views on certain videos I've done. Uh, parent issues are, are just screwed up. And I've learned this by my mother. It's tough to learn a, it's tough to love a parent who's just wants to frustrate the shit out of you because they refuse to change, refuse to acknowledge, and they're my mom is my dad told me this, but I'm my mom's basically my mom's basically a crazy person. 
she doesn't want to look at her and what she's done. She wants to see the world and blame the world. And it's tough to, it's tough to love love a person like that, be with them, and not and and interact with them and not drive yourself insane. And I realize like you can't like you literally have to distance yourself. I have to distance myself from my mother, which is why so many years of like shit. What if I just cut her off? Well, not a why because the cut off was saying I need to do this in a, in a different way. That works for me. And I'm not cutting her off. Lost connection. Oh, there we go. We're back. Lost connection there. End of the day, look. I've learned this about mom. Can't change her. I'm okay with that. I can change me. I can do me. I'm going to do this in a way that works for me. Where I'm happier, healthier, and just better. Because I've changed the way I do this. She will change how she interacts with me. How she interacts with me. Not, she won't change, but the way you interact will be different. Because now it's in my favor, and it works for me. Still love her. Always will. So long. Anyways, preach you guys. Look forward to sharing more with y'all. Deuces.